some of the other things that we need to have investigated. As the, as the flotilla kept moving on and on, and at about four in the morning, as we looked to the stern of all six of the ships, you could see lights starting to appear in the distance and getting closer and closer and closer. And by about 4.30, all of a sudden, we started seeing Zodiac boats, these military boats that are, they call them, you know, fast movers. They are small boats, but still 30 feet long, filled with all sorts of military equipment, weapons, and also 15 to 20 uh, commandos on them. We started seeing those, those Zodiacs coming up. We saw two of them on each side of the Marvy Marmara. Our ship, the Challenger 1, was about 150 yards off to the port stern of the Marmara. So we were watching, watching as these boats came up and trying to attach themselves to the, to the stern of the ship. And as the Israeli commando started firing uh, concussion, percussion grenades up into the upper decks, these are grenades that, are, uh, that have huge sounds to them and the smoke that comes out of them. And they're the same types that the U.S. military uses when they bust down the doors in homes in Afghanistan and, and Iraq. When you go in, you want to stun people, you want to be able to surprise them bust through the, the smoke and the people are addled. And let me tell you, it, it does addle you because shortly thereafter, about 15 minutes thereafter, our ship was uh, boarded and, and uh, concussion grenades blown through the windows of our ship. And when the glass starts flying at you and the smoke comes and the ears, your ears think they've been blown out, and then all of a sudden you hear a commandos right, right in your face. I mean, those, those grenades do what they're supposed to do. Well, on the Marvy Mar Mar Marmara, uh, the, there were activists that were on the, the stern of the ship and who had decided they weren't about to give a welcome invitation to the Israeli Navy to join the ship. And in fact, that's what all of us, when none of us were going to say, welcome, here's a ship boarded, that was not what we were there for. However, we did make a pledge of, of nonviolent resistance that we would, we would figure out ways to make their, their boarding of the ship more difficult. Uh, knowing full well that as, as unarmed civilians, you don't really have a chance against commandos, whether it's American commandos or whether it's Israeli commandos. Uh, the, we saw helicopters start coming over the Marvy Marmara. Three of them start coming over it. At that point, the captain of the Marmara radioed the captain of our ship saying, you're on a smaller ship, a faster ship. Why don't you go ahead, see if you can speed away and maybe some of those Zodiac boats will come after you all. So we did, and we sped ahead for about 15 minutes at top speed, 22 knots, zoom, zoom, there we were going. But we had beside us two Zodiac boats going that probably could go 35 knots. So it was at a point when we saw a large light looming from the, the port, the port uh, bow, coming slowly across in front of our ship. And then all of a sudden, the captain of the ship pulled off all the power. And there we were just dead in the water with a huge Israeli naval ship right in front of us. That's one way you can stop ships from moving is put another one right in front of it. And when large ships are going at, at eight knots, like the Marvy Marmara, not at fast pace, um, it's another question. Why did the Israeli military feel that they had to board those vessels? Why did they have to board them? If they wanted to stop them, were there other ways to stop them? Could they stop them without boarding them? And particularly a big ship with 600 people on it, a lot of men that were on it. And you know what happens when men are up against men. Well, that's why on our little ship, when we constructed our peaceful nonviolent resistance to being boarded, we didn't put the men on our ship out as the resistance force. We put the women out there. Yeah, because we knew what testosterone would do. That there would definitely be clashes if we had guys on the start of the ship. So we put our loudest women out on the back of the ship, and their job was to stand in the way of those commandos trying to board that ship and yell at them, stop, don't come on our ship, you don't have permission to get on our ship, get away from here, get away from here. So what do you think happened? They got on. Well, 
we did what we needed to do. We did our peaceful nonviolent resistance, but when you have the flash bangs that are coming in, when you have paint ball, paint bullets being shot at you, which they did on all of the ships, and hitting people in the face. One of the women on our ship was shot right in the face, right in the nose, barely missing both of her eyes. So this idea of, well, they're just using paint balls, they're just using paint bullets, you know, that's non-lethal stuff. Well, they can be very lethal if they hit in the right spot. And one of the questions I have for this independent uh, investigation, if it ever takes place, is who was there an authorization that these commandos would shoot at people's face? I mean, in rules of engagement, I mean, how many of you all have ever been in the in a, in a military, U.S. military or other militaries? Several people. We know that there are rules of engagement, and you're told what you can do and what you can't do. And if you're boarding a ship, and it's particularly if you're facing women standing there, who gave the order to shoot them in the face? Normally, if you, if you want to take somebody down, you shoot them in the leg, but that's not what was happening. So why were they doing that? As they boarded the ship, as they were using stun guns against the woman Australian reporter on the top deck, why were they using a stun gun against a reporter? Um, why were they throwing women on the ground, on the decks, in the broken glass, and then handcuffing them, putting hoods over them, and taking them to the bow of the ship? And all of the commandos being in black masks, black masks so that you can't tell who they are, with no name tags, with no rank on them, just like the American military does in Afghanistan and Iraq. So our boat was boarded within the, in, in 20 seconds, the commandos had uh, control of them. It was not uh, a hard thing. Okay, you're up against civilians, unarmed civilians. Uh, it's not difficult. It was not a great military feat. Uh, but on the Marby Marmara, there were other things that were happening. The helicopters were flying over, starting to uh, having commandos repel down ropes from the helicopters. And you saw uh, on the video that the Israeli military has put out that there were passengers on board that Marmara that had sticks and some metal railings that they had broken off the ship, and they were hitting those commandos. I mean, we saw that. We saw a chair being, being hit, uh, a commando being hit with them. Well, one of the things that an independent investigation, I would hope, would, would look into is what triggered that. Was it, as a Al Jazeera reporter mentioned, that as he was standing on the top deck, that all of a sudden a passenger standing next to him just dropped in a pool of blood? Was it that indeed there was live ammunition, live fire coming from the helicopters? And if that is true, and I don't know that it is, but it's something that must be investigated, then one could anticipate that other passengers on the top of that ship, when they saw the commandos repelling down, probably were not going to stand there and say, well, shoot me next. Probably not. Uh, so there, there was uh, violence against those commandos. Um, the Israeli military, in their in internal investigation that they had done that was made public uh, last Monday, they say that there were nine commandos that were injured, that three of them had been stabbed, and one of them had been shot in the knee. One of the questions for the, um, for the board, for an investigation, is uh, what kind of bullet was that this commando was shot with? Was it a bullet from Israeli weapons? The Israeli military says, well, some weapons were taken from our commandos and were used by passengers to shoot other uh, commandos. Uh, we need to find out if that's really what, what happened. Or is it the case as has happened uh, for example, in the Israeli military casualties during the 22-day attack on Gaza, where during that attack that killed 1,440 people, there were 10 Israeli military that were killed. But five of them were killed by friendly fire. Five of them killed by their own Israeli military forces. Something that happens also in the U.S. military. And in such close quarters, with, with a lot of people there, who shot whom? That's one of the questions, and when did it happen, that needs to be um, investigated. 